Report. I'm Max Kaiser. Time now to go to Austin, Texas, to talk with Alex Jones of Infowars.com. Uh, Alex, um, we have in the United States the abandonment of habeas corpus. We've got the Patriot Act. We've got the um, NDAA. We've got extrajudicial murders of U.S. citizens. We've got Bradley Manning being held without charge. Um, is, how would you define tyranny in America, Alex Jones? We are now seeing highway checkpoints without warrants, quote, looking for gang members where they search your vehicle. Whether you're for gun control or not, they now have the federal government announcing, we're just going to put pressure and muscle and threats on gun dealers and manufacturers outside of law. We are seeing uh, just uh, situations where taxes, in some cases, are being doubled or tripled. Uh, we're seeing taxes increased on poor people. We're seeing the ultra-rich basically exempt. Uh, did I mention, you know, all of the warrantless wiretapping by the NSA, uh, the TSA sticking their hands down our pants? Uh, the police courts have ruled can taser you to make you answer questions. There's no more uh, Fifth Amendment. Uh, I mean, it is insane. If you read a dystopic novel, or if you go look at what dystopic real countries have done, like Nazi Germany or uh, other cases, America is rapidly becoming that, and then some. But you kind of have parallel systems. You still have some of the old freedoms left, and people think they're free, and there's still some First Amendment. But it doesn't matter. The tyrants are just moving forward, uh, and both parties are controlled by the very same mega banks that you have exposed, Max. Uh, and it just gets worse and worse and worse by the minute. And now you have Germany pulling their gold out, a bunch of other countries. Okay, okay let me, we're going to get to Germany in a second. Let, let me just focus on this uh, idea of tyranny for a second. Now, I've been on your show a, a, a few times. We've, we've talked about the banks and the mega banks, et cetera. And, but this idea of tyranny as it relates to the Second Amendment and gun ownership and gun control, and, of course, this is a huge topic now across the, uh, the country in the United States. My point that I've made on your show before, and I'd like to ask you, and I'll make the point again. If the people who are owning guns are doing so because their interpretation of the Second Amendment is that they need to protect themselves against government and against tyranny, and we have we just listed 15 examples of that threshold that has been crossed by the what government. What are they waiting for? What are they waiting for? That, that's right. So what? What? What is? Why? Why are wh they've got the guns? They've got the imperative from the, the mandate from the Constitution. What? What are they waiting for? Listen, I agree that this country's been occupied by the globalists, by the banksters. They've bragged in financial publications. They've taken us over. They've taken over much of Europe. They're now installing leaders. Uh, and it's the final straw. People can have their bank account stolen, have the value of their dollar destroyed. They can have their privacy stolen. They can have their dignity stolen by the TSA now with, with highway checkpoints. But it is the fact that people remember the, you know, the stories of the founding fathers in 1776. They're like, oh, now I get it. Uh, you want me to be under a tyranny. So it, it, it's kind of that final straw, and Ron Paul was on my syndicated radio show last week, the outgoing congressman, and he said this will cause a civil war. And that's the point. The military-industrial complex owned by these foreign banks, these, these offshore banks, not even foreign, they want to start a civil war. They want to start a conflict because no one's ever stopped them. Uh, they're like criminals that never get caught, so they get crazier and crazier. You know, and uh, start uh, you know uh, leaving their calling card when they rob a bank. They are now openly saying all of Homeland Security is for libertarians and conservatives and gun owners. Not that conservatives didn't support Bush and his tyranny. It's just the establishment sees people who at least say they're pro free market and pro liberty as the enemy. We are going into a receivership collectivism. Uh, implosion by design to bring us to our knees like the people of Greece uh, and now uh, Italy and other countries. We are under the very same occupation, the bankster occupation that you've talked about, uh, and uh, it is just a nightmare to behold. So when I was on Piers Morgan and I said, if you keep pushing, it's going to cost 1776 part two, I was just letting them know, look, I understand the game plan. You guys in the internal Homeland Security documents for a decade, 
that have now been public for four years uh, that we got from law enforcement that were confirmed to be accurate. Gun owners, libertarians, returning veterans, land rights activists, anti-Federal Reserve uh, activists, uh, uh, Occupy Wall Street people, uh, anti-war people, anybody who knows the system's corrupt, left, right, or center, anybody who's got an IQ above room temperature, anybody who can tie their shoelaces, anybody that knows we've got crooks running things in both parties is being listed as the new enemy and they want to kick off this new purge going after gun owners. Right, I, want to, I, want to, I want to jump ahead because certainly there's been a lot, your show every single day, Infowars.com, it's fantastic discussion about this every day. I wanted to talk a little bit about um, Aaron Schwartz because we paid a tribute to Aaron on the show. Uh, an internet activist who committed suicide last week. His father basically blamed the government. He said, the government killed my son. Uh, another act of blatant tyranny, it would seem. Your thoughts on this and the increasingly aggressive crackdown uh, on alternative media and activist Alex Jones? Well, what they do is they indict you for going and getting taxpayer paid for research papers over the last 30 years that we all paid for at MIT, that everybody deserves to see, and he put them out as an act of resistance, and it was just academic research papers, most of it obsolete, and they were trying to put him in jail for 35 years. Now, a lot of times they indict you and then say you're depressed and kill you. Uh, this is the guy that helped coordinate, at the very core, the defeat of SOPA and CISPA. Uh, this is a guy who was fighting on every level, and uh, I don't necessarily believe that they didn't actually physically kill him, not just harass him until he committed suicide. Uh, you know, you have like a 97% conviction rate in federal courts because they're kangaroo courts and have selected juries. Nazi Germany had juries. They were just selected juries. Uh, I mean, you don't have 97% conviction rates in, in, in a free country. Give me a break. I mean, it's turned out with DNA, 37% of people on death row on average are innocent. And it comes out all the time. They know people are innocent and frame them. I know people who've been released from prison who had no criminal record and were put on death row just because they felt like doing it. Uh, so, yeah, we have a lot of psychopaths. Psychopaths that are, are attracted to government power. That's 101 criminology. And look, Gary Webb told me he was coming on my show in three months, the Pulitzer Prize winner for Dark Alliance on CIA drug dealing. And they tried to discredit him. He had a new book coming out, doubly proving that he'd been accurate. And he told people, three people I talked to, his friends, and I talked to him, he said he was being harassed, that people were breaking in his house, special forces type guys were sliding down the poles, you know, the drainage pipes, I mean, like commandos, robbing him, stealing his papers. He was being death threatened. He moved. And they came and shot him twice in the head. And the police said that's quite normal. So if anybody ever shoots and kills me, and then says, I did it. it. It is a lie. It is a lie. It is a lie. And, and they always have a, quote, friend pop up and go, you know, I know Gary said he wouldn't commit suicide, but he told me he was. The D.C. madam told me on air she was being followed and threatened she would never commit suicide. And they whacked her. And, and, and had a fake suicide note that wasn't even the same handwriting. I mean, I got that from her condo manager, okay. uh, who was her good well, friend. Well, you know, I think people, you know, need to visit Texas, and they'll find out that it's a state full of people like Alex Jones. You are Texas. You are Austin. You are Alex Jones, and the, the rest of the world uh, needs to understand what Texas is all about for real. Now, I want to ask you about, again, again coming back to Piers Morgan for a second, uh, CNN host, of course, you were on a show recently, caused a bit of a stir. Uh, many American progressives and liberals don't know about Piers Morgan's past in the UK of phone hacking, publishing fake photos, trading on shares, which had uh, his tabloid was pumping and dumping. What, why does Piers get a get a, a go a get free uh, pass in America? He's he's an acknowledged. Uh, dangerous element here in the UK. That's one of the reasons he's in the US, to escape prosecution here in the UK. Uh, he is a gangster. And when I was with him in person, I mean, he came off as a cold blooded, uh, you know, reptile type person. And, and at the end of the interview, I got in his face and I said, Look, buddy, I know you're a gangster and you're not getting our Second Amendment. You're on notice. And, and he laughed at me and he said, We'll see. He's put out tweets saying, I'm British, I'm better than Americans, I'm conquering you. Bizarre stuff. He's put out tweets saying, I am standing on the dead bodies of the children. Uh, and, 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 and again, he got fired from one newspaper, as you were reporting, 
for publishing fake photos. Uh, you know, all the connections, him over these hackers. He's, he's a hatchet man, and that's why I blew up and got in his face to go, look, cut the crap, man. We know what you're really here, here for. But here's the news. The guy's got a half million viewers. His audience doubled after I was on there for a week. Now the ratings have gone back down. He is a he is a legend in his own mind. I mean, I have conservatively three million listeners a day on terrestrial radio. Over a million people on YouTube watching one way or another every day. That's four million. Okay, if you okay. Add that, all... that brings up an interesting point, Alex, and in that you really saved his bacon to some degree because he was about to get canceled. Everyone hated him after he came came on board from Larry King. He was a stuck-up, you know, plump Brit who seemed to, you know, be in, in league with the worst elements of aristocratic uh, skullduggery. And you suddenly made him part of the conversation. So looking back now, Alex, do you feel maybe some regret in having made Piers Morgan part of the American conversation? You saved his job, Alex Jones. Is that a, is that a good thing or a bad thing, Alex? Well, I don't think I saved his job because they're looking. He's got a year left on his three-year contract of $8 million. They report he's probably going to be moved to the 10 o'clock slot. Uh, it was like a sugar fix. Yeah, he went from 500,000 to a million-plus viewers for the next three or four days. Those numbers are already going down uh, back to the ridiculous half a million viewers. I mean, what a joke. Larry King, you know, seven, eight years ago had 10 million viewers. I mean, this guy is a joke, but all of the dinosaur media is a joke. Uh, sure, I mean, it got him to be part of the conversation, so I think it made Alex Jones even more uh, a larger part uh, of the discussion. Uh, I think that's the effect that it had ramming the issue out of, look, taking our guns is about slavery and tyranny. The White House responded that night at the end of the show to my petition and, quote, denied it uh, to deport his butt uh, for the different activities uh, that he's engaged in, uh, trying to manipulate our internal our entire uh, politics. And, and now Obama in his speech yesterday undoubtedly said there's these pundits who say it's about tyranny and enslavement. They just want to make money, clearly attacking me. So I now have the White House re officially responding in, in, in huge press conferences to us, okay? That's the truth. Piers Morgan had to admit, yes, you have tens of millions of overall listeners every week. You shouldn't have this platform. You know, he night after night, he said, somebody needs to shoot this guy. He talked about how he wants to kill me. Did you see that? I mean, they're panicking. They're a bunch of gangsters, and their time is running out. We're out of time. Thanks so much for being on the Kaiser Report. Max, thank you for having me. And folks can follow me at Real Alex Jones on Twitter and Infowars.com. And uh, say hi to all your uh, great crew there for me. All right, fantastic. All right, and that's going to do it for this edition of the Kaiser Report with me, Max Kaiser, and Stacey Herbert. And I want to thank my guest, Alex Jones of Infowars.com. If you'd like to contact us, please tweet us at Kaiser Report or at Facebook.com forward slash Kaiser Report. Until next time, Max Kaiser saying bye, y'all.